Bienvenidos a la noche cósmica de la oveja eléctrica, aquí en Canal 22, en donde hoy vamos a hablar con el destacado físico italiano Carlos Robelli, en una serie de tres programas, sobre la perspectiva de la física como un tejido de interrelaciones. A esto se le llama física relacional. Robelli dice que debemos abandonar algo que nos parecía completamente natural, la simple idea de un mundo hecho de cosas. Todo objeto o sujeto es una expresión efímera de una red de relaciones. Sus propiedades existen en relación a algo más. Todo es lo que es, solo en relación con algo más. Se trata de un maravilloso universo en el que nada existe por sí mismo. Esta es una perspectiva con la que Robelli trata de entender desde el mundo de lo más grande de lo grande, descrito por la teoría de la relatividad general, hasta el mundo de lo más pequeño de lo pequeño, descrito por la física cuántica. Pero también nos permite entender más ampliamente quién es el personaje Carlos Robelli con relación al tejido de sus amistades y maestros. Uno de ellos, fundamental, fue el gran escritor y editor Roberto Calasso. Carlo Robelli is an outstanding Italian theoretical physicist. He is one of the first explorers of loop quantum gravity that tries to integrate two windows of our understanding of nature. One that explains the phenomena in the larger scales through general theory of relativity, and the other that delves in the minimalist world of subatomic particles of quantum physics. He is the author of several brilliant books, such as Seven Brief Lessons on Physics and uh, Helgoland, Making Sense of the Quantum Revolution, and The Order of Time, very recently translated into Spanish. The Seven Lessons book have been translated in more than 41 languages, but what is more relevant for me is that the late Roberto Calasso, one of the finest publishers and writers, said this to Robelli. Carlo, I read what you wrote, I like it. Whatever you write that you think important, send it to me. If you have true things to say, I'll publish them. And Carlo Robelli has really something brilliant to say in the domains of curiosity, knowledge, and passion for understanding our world, our universe. Welcome to the electric ship, La Oveja Eléctrica, in Channel 22 in Mexico, Carlo. Thank you very much, Jose, for this uh, very kind, uh, uh, very generous introduction. And you know, one of the main ideas you explore for understanding the different layers of time, of our world, of our universe, is the relational perspective. This also can apply to see how do you develop your knowledge in relationship to some people and ideas. We'll explore your relationship with Bryce DeWitt and John Wheeler, but let's talk first about Roberto Calasso. You say that Roberto referred to a passage of the Upanishads that he particularly loved and you completed his quote by heart. What passage are you talking about and how was the interaction and attraction between your different worlds? <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, it happened during the first meeting between me and Roberto Calasso. Um, I had talked before uh, with some people in his um, organization, uh, in his uh, publishing house at Delphi, um, about uh, uh, publishing some lectures of mine, uh, some articles of mine, and becoming a book. Uh, so I've drafted this book that later became uh, um, Brief Lessons of Physics. And uh, I went to Milano and uh, uh, met him and we started talking and very rapidly the conversation went away from the particular book and started uh, rumbling around uh, um, what is knowledge, what is uh, the intellectual world, what do we know about the world, what we do not know about the world. And uh, uh, I don't 
don't remember how the conversation went on the Upanishad, uh, and uh, which is a book that has been important for Roberto, but it's, has also been important uh, uh, for me. Um, the Upanishads are, of course, a, a a part of the Veda and the sort of the philosophical part of the Veda and one of the first uh, major reflections about uh, reality uh, in Eastern uh, um, uh, thinking. A lot of later uh, Eastern ideas uh, 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 that also influenced uh, Western ideas uh, come, came from the uh, Upanishad. And the part he uh, quoted is the beginning of one of the Upanishad, um, which is about the rituals. And uh, uh, the, uh, it connects uh, the part of the body of the animal of the sacrifice with part of the, of the cosmos. En los textos védicos se entiende como sacrificio no una inmolación real, sino un ritual simbólico en donde el animal representa un proceso de transformación y manifestación de la materia en el cuerpo del cosmos. Así, Roberto Calasso señala en el libro titulado Ardor que los textos se convierten en astillas luminosas en donde arde el fuego del conocimiento. Así, la aurora, el amanecer, es la cabeza del caballo sacrificial. El sol, anticipando a Goethe, es el ojo. El viento, el aliento. La boca abierta es el fuego elemental. Su relincho es el habla misma y las estrellas son sus huesos. Cuando bosteza, el cielo relampaguea. Cuando se agita el caballo, los truenos retumban. So the head of the horse is the sun and, and, and so on like that. And there is this uh, very non-scientific, very mythical way of thinking expressed in an extraordinarily powerful way in which it connects something which is happening in a sacrifice with the with the cosmos as a whole and it was a, a passage that i was uh, that impressed me and remained in my heart and uh, remarkably also for roberto Palazzo was uh, was very important i didn't know but he talked about that in one of his uh, uh, books so immediately we found a some deep resonance uh, me as a scientist he as a publisher and a man of vast culture and i think this is um this is a little bit the key of also of the books that I've done with him and he has published. Uh, I talk about physics, uh, but not strictly within uh, the technicalities uh, of the physicist. Uh, I don't think that physics is just uh, mathematics uh, or experiments. Uh, it's our effort of thinking reality and is in a dialogue uh, with culture as a whole. La realidad se interpreta como un tejido de interrelaciones un diálogo en las diversas capas de la cultura como un todo. ¿Qué mejor ejemplo que el diálogo entre el mundo del mito y la literatura en su máxima expresión con el gran ensayista y editor Roberto Calasso y el destacado físico Carlo Rovelli? Ambos enfoques están vinculados por la curiosidad, por el conocimiento, por el misterio del universo. Para entender la mirada de Carlo Rovelli, hay que explorar otros componentes de su cuerpo intelectual e imaginativo. Después del corte, veremos cómo lo marcó su relación con las ideas de dos grandes maestros de la física contemporánea a quienes conoció personalmente. Como de rayo con tintes verdes y dorados como los que aparecen en los textos más antiguos de conocimiento, estamos de regreso en la noche cósmica de la oveja eléctrica aquí en Canal 22. Estamos conversando con el destacado físico italiano Carlo Rovelli en torno al mundo de relaciones e ideas que marcan su pensamiento en la búsqueda de entender los misterios del tiempo, los misterios de la fuerza de la gravedad. Los intentos de unir el funcionamiento de la fuerza de la gravedad en el mundo de lo más grande de lo grande, descrito por la teoría de la relatividad general, con el mundo de las partículas subatómicas, se vinculan al desarrollo de una teoría de gravedad cuántica en la que fueron claves dos físicos a los que Robelli conoció personalmente. Mm. 
Now let's talk about Bryce DeWitt and John Wheeler exploration of quantum gravity about their equation without the variable of time and the equation of your relationship and friendship with them and their ideas, because this is also a sort of relational perspective. Um, John Wheeler uh, has been, and Bryce DeWitt, both of them, have been uh, uh, mythical figures for me, uh, both very important. Uh, when I was a, um, a student in, 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 uh, in Bologna, I became fascinated with the problem of quantum gravity, the problem of, uh, as you said at the beginning, the problem of uh, connecting these two windows. I think you, you used a very good word, windows. Uh, we have found uh, to look, to understand, to try to understand something about the physical world. Uh, we have two of them, and they don't talk to one another, and the big problem is to put them together. And Bryce DeWitt um, and John Wheeler have been the great uh, intellectual explorer of this uh, merging of quantum and uh, uh, relativity. And together they wrote um, what is called the Wheeler DeWitt equation, which has been uh, our uh, tool for trying to understand the problem, uh, our main tool for many years, and still now is, is the basis on which we, uh, uh, on basic, on which we work. And um, I have uh, memories of both. Uh, John Wheeler wrote me a letter. I received a letter from John Wheeler uh, when I was a young scientist. I had published some articles and I received a uh, saying, dear Carlo, it's wonderful what you're doing. I'm following. I want to please come and see me. We want to discuss. And you can imagine this, this letter is still hanging on the wall of my, uh, of my office. And uh, uh, every time I look at him, I think I think about John. John is not about with us uh, anymore. I miss him a lot. I, I went to see him in Princeton. Um, he is the first person uh, of the uh, of that level that took my war my work uh, uh, seriously. And, uh, and and this for a young man like me was a, was an immense uh, uh, an immense step, uh, of course, and something. Slightly different happened with uh, Bryce David, um, which is uh, I met him uh, pretty early when I went to London, uh, but I, 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 I barely had the courage to talk to him. He was a great figure of uh, the great scientist uh, up there. I remember the first time I saw him. And uh, the first time I had uh, I discussed physics with him, uh, he was uh, um, serious in his reaction, critical, interested, the listening, but critical. And uh, uh, only later, reading his memories, I found out how much carefully he was following the kind of work in which me and my colleagues uh, um, were invo involved uh, and how much he was uh, 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 sort of uh, seeing with, uh, uh, with, with uh, positive eyes to, the, to that. So these are my intellectual grandfathers, if you want. And the oh. equation they've written, the famous Wheeler de Witt equation, has this feature that there is no time variable in the equation. There's no time in the equation. And this has opened a, a, a major problem, perhaps the entire problem of time, which I discuss in, in my book, The Order of Time, which is the sense in which time uh, is not there at the fundamental level when we try to take into account both uh, uh, quantum and, and, uh, uh, and gravity. So they have begun opening our mind toward a uh, different way of thinking about time uh, on which for decades then uh, the, the research have, uh, uh, have built. And I think that their ideas were correct. Uh, be, uh, me and my colleague have been walking on the path that, that they have opened. Nos encontramos, como dice el físico italiano Carlo Rovelli, con la extrañeza de que en el nivel fundamental de la naturaleza, el tiempo no está ahí. Esto lleva a paradojas, como por ejemplo la de pedirle a un físico que nos demuestre en 10 minutos que no existe el tiempo. Lo cierto es que estamos hablando de varias capas del tiempo y de maneras distintas de pensarlo. Esto se vuelve evidente en una teoría que trata de integrar la forma en que entendemos la gravedad 
como hendiduras gigantescas del espacio-tiempo al nivel de hoyos negros, con las descripciones de esa fuerza en los niveles minimalistas de las partículas subatómicas. Una de esas búsquedas echadas a andar por los maestros de Rovelli desemboca en un trabajo en el que el físico italiano, junto con otros científicos, ha puesto toda su vida. El desarrollo de una teoría denominada gravedad cuántica de bucles. De ello conversaremos después del corte. de rayo con tintes verdes y dorados que trata de alumbrar los misterios del cosmos, estamos de regreso en La Oveja Eléctrica, aquí en Canal 22. Estamos conversando con el destacado físico italiano Carlo Rovelli sobre una forma distinta de pensar el tejido del espacio-tiempo. La teoría general de la relatividad nos habla de la gravedad como curvaturas o hendiduras de un lienzo cósmico invisible, pero eso no se aplica al nivel de la física de partículas subatómicas. En la escala más pequeña, el espacio-tiempo podría concebirse no como una malla continua, sino como una especie de espuma formada por unos lazos o bucles entretejidos que dan lugar a ese nivel de la realidad. This led us to loop quantum gravity to try to integrate general relativity and quantum mechanics to integrate in a big canvas of the net of space and time, the smallest bit of space and time. So please tell us, tell us about what is your, your take in this loop quantum gravity. How can we explain it to the general public? Um, this equation that John Wheeler um, and Bryce David wrote uh, is um, a, a, an attempt to, to have a mathematical description of quantum gravity. And um, it, it was very rough, not very well defined equation. In fact, it's an equation that doesn't work very well uh, as they wrote it. Um, and the effort then was to transform it into a, a mathematical well uh, defined uh, theory and also on something that we can have an intuition and understand. And this is, has been the work of my life, to uh, transform the intuition of Bryce, uh, the Beat and John Wheeler, into a uh, well-defined theory. And so today we have, uh, I mean, to, together with many colleagues of mine, including in Mexico, um, today we have a, a, a theory, loop quantum gravity, that is a, a, a rigorous version of their theory. And most importantly, we have an understanding of what is going on. And what is going on um, is this, uh, the, the two sides of the story, relativity and, and quantum, tell us two stories that have to be combined. And the relativity tell us that space, the, the space in which we are immersed, the space around us, um, is like a material thing. It's a thing, it's an object with dynamics. Einstein used the uh, metaphor uh, of a molluscus. We're immersed in a huge jellyfish um, and, uh, which bends and, 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 and stretch. And gravity is the bending and stretching of space in which we are. The reason things fall down is because uh, space and space-time uh, curve in such a way that things want to fall down. But then there's quantum theory. And quantum theory tells us that uh, this, uh, uh, this physical space in which we have quantum properties. And the most important, most characteristic quantum property, the name itself says it, quantum, is granularity, the quanta, the grains. So a, a, a key consequence of quantum loop gravity or loop quantum gravity is that the space in which we are immersed uh, is made by grains. You cannot cut Spain at infinity. At some point there's a minimum size, uh, there's this quanta of space, and so loop quantum gravity is a theory of this quantum of space. And you can imagine little minusculous, extremely small things, which are the quantum of space, which all together make up the space in which we are immersed. And they're connected. They know who is next to whom. 
So they make a sort of graph, which in the technical jargon of the theory is called a spin network, because we use spins, little numbers to characterize it. Networks, because it's a network, once again, is relation to these points. Relations is what matter. And this, uh, loop quantum gravity is a precise mathematical description of this quantum structure uh, of space. Um, the current effort is to try to uh, uh, derive physical consequences and apply the theory to the situation in the world where quantum gravity is relevant to black holes, to the early universe, uh, to find uh, uh, how the theory can allow us to explain this phenomena and especially to find uh, empirical support for the theory, confirmations of the theory, to verify that the theory is right. That's where we are. Uh, and uh, uh, where, where, where are we now in this path of, of having verification or confirmation? Where are the, the lines where we could have some, some uh, experiments that uh, could uh, uh, prove uh, this, this approach? There are two, uh, two directions which have, have been um, followed a lot. One regards the early universe. In the early universe uh, uh, near the Big Bang, we don't know anything about the Big Bang. We know that in the past the universe was very much compressed from cosmology. We can uh, very well reconstruct the history of the universe for 13, 14 billion years. Before, we know it was very hot, very compressed, uh, very dense. Um, but to see what happened, we need a quantum theory of gravity because that's a regime, a situation where gravity, relativistic gravity is relevant, Einstein theory is relevant, but also quantum mechanics is relevant. So we need, we need everything together. So that's where we can test the theory. And the hope is to um, use the theory to describe what happened there and derive some consequences. And what happened there, according to loop quantum gravity, seems to be that uh, the universe was not born at the Big Bang, uh, but uh, there was a previous phase. So there was a, a contraction, a, a contracting universe that got to a super dense um, uh, configuration and then bounced up. up. So the Big Bang is really a, a big bounce. Um, and this is what the equations seem to be saying. And uh, there are some calculations that uh, uh, connect this initial bounce to what we see in the sky, the cosmic background radiations and what the astronomers see in the sky. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of detail that the astronomers are seeing in, in the sky, in the cosmic background radiation. Um, so the hope is to connect uh, the part of these uh, details that we cannot figure out with the, cal with the theoretical calculations from loop quantum gravity and show that they, they, they predict the right thing that we see. Um, there's a lot of work, a lot of uh, attempts. Uh, the, the, the observations are becoming much more, more and more precise. I hope uh, that uh, in a certain number of years, uh, there would be some, uh, some possibility of supporting and say, okay, the theory is right. Uh, because it predicts the right thing. This is one. And the other direction is uh, black holes. Black holes, uh, uh, if you want the great novelty of these last uh, decades, right? We have seen black holes in the sky. We have seen gravitational waves produced by black holes. So now we are sure that the universe is full, full of black holes. There are plenty of black holes out there. And on the one hand, we can describe them very well, but they're still mysterious because we don't know what is inside. And we don't know what happened to a black hole in the distant future. Because it, we know it evaporates, becomes smaller and smaller, but we don't know what happened next. We need quantum gravity. So once again, quantum gravity should tell us what happened um, and uh, predict that in the moment in which the black hole ends the evaporation, it should emit some signals, uh, uh, which we hope to be able to compute and then to compare with what the astronomers, the radio astronomers see in the sky and see the things uh, match. So we are in the moment, uh, it's an emotional moment in which trying to see, okay, we have built a theory, is it gonna work or not? Uh, it's not an issue of months, uh, it will be years. I hope, uh, how can I say, before dying, uh, that some positive signals will, uh, will come out. Estamos hablando de una teoría 
que tiene otro enfoque para tratar de entender el Big Bang. Si hubo, por ejemplo, una fase anterior a lo que consideramos el origen del universo. Una teoría que trata de entender de manera distinta y de predecir lo que ocurre en los agujeros negros, que son otras de las fronteras de nuestro conocimiento del cosmos. Esto requiere un trabajo paciente y humilde ante los datos que corroborarán o no las teorías. En la siguiente emisión de La Oveja Eléctrica, seguiremos conversando con el destacado físico italiano Carlo Rovelli sobre la naturaleza del mundo, que más que como una escenografía hecha de objetos y cosas, él ve como un tejido, como una red de besos, de sucesos que se explican por sus interrelaciones. Y es el momento de dar un salto cuántico discontinuo, como el que se da en las imágenes de las películas de Charles Chaplin, con nuestro querido Fernando Rivera Calderón, en una sección en donde también salta el corazón con la aparición de la música y lo inesperado. Todas las cosas son sucesos, son sucesos esas cosas, esas cosas que suceden y que pasan y se mueven. Somos tiempo condensado, tiempo en polvo enamorado, nuestras manos manecillas, nuestra hora al marcado. Todo llega siempre a tiempo, hasta lo que llega tarde. La materia solo es tiempo, es la llama mientras arde. Yo no sé si el tiempo pasa o uno pasa por el tiempo, como la ciruela pasa. Cuando no hay un contratiempo, tiempo, 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 tiempo. tiempo. 